actually took us about nine months to to develop the the, uh, the Mustang, and it did and it did everything. And then the original was a was powered by Rotex nine nine twelve S. That was the other thing that was important with, with that. With my experience with the nine twelve S, that hundred horsepower engine was there. There's those are big horses, <laughs> and uh, and I knew that it had the power to fly uh, fly this. And actually, the prototype would would cruise at 150 miles an hour on five gallons an hour. The, the, the downside to it was that it didn't make the noise that the guys wanted and, and it wouldn't turn the big prop that the guys wanted. So, uh, so it, it was, uh, but, but, but it was really a great, great flying airplane. In fact, I, I flew that prototype out to uh, the Copper State Fly-In probably uh, at least three times. And, uh, and of course flew it to, to Sun and Fun uh, more than that in Toshkosh. But but it was you know just a, a great cross country airplane it had long legs because it it, uh, it would only burn five gallons an hour and you had I had twenty you know twenty four gallons or whatever in it so so it uh, uh, it was a, a great airplane then then we we eventually um, uh, in fact Dan Hawken when when he finished his the the uh, the first kit. He wanted to put a bigger engine in, so he put he put a Suzuki. Uh, the, actually, the first engine they put in was a Suzuki straight straight four, and that didn't work. And and I I had tried to talk him out of that. Then then he went to a found a Suzuki V6, and on the Suzuki V6, I I kind of helped him with a prop and so forth. In fact, it, it was actually the first prop that we put in. It was an Airmaster prop. It was a four bladed Airmaster, and. Uh, he had developed a lot of interest because people were buying. We were selling a lot of uh, the airplanes with the Rotex engines, but people wanted bigger engines. So there was interest in in this in this automotive engine. I was dead against it, and and thought for sure that it that it wasn't going to work. So, uh, and then when the four cylinder didn't work out, you know, I I said I told you so, <laughs> but but the. Uh, but then on the V6, you know, he was real happy with, and he had a lot of interest, developing a lot of interest, and he wanted me to promote it. And I said, I'll tell you what, Dan, before I'll promote that, I, I want you to get, you get 300 hours on it. I said, I'll come up and fly it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. So I don't know how long it took him, but he had 300 hours on it. I, I went up there, flew the airplane, went up to Calgary and flew the airplane, and I was just totally blown away. I remember it was crap weather. When when I finally got up, it was snowing and and uh, but but by God, I was going to fly it, you know, and I just fly it around the pattern. But it climbed better. It it felt every bit as as good. And uh, and I thought, well, you know, if, if it's and and the big thing about about the the prototype and in the original uh, Suzuki engine is that that those airplanes stalled at at, uh, at about 40 miles an hour. The, the prototype actually stalled at 39 miles an hour. You can put it in anywhere, you know. So it was a very safe airplane, and that's what I was really looking for. Something, something that looked the part, you know, looked the macho uh, Mustang, but, but was uh, uh, friendly and, and not going to hurt you. So, uh, so anyway, the the when I got out of that airplane, I thought, geez, I'm gonna, I'm, I guess I'm going to be eating crow because I really, really like it. So we came back, and I was working on a, on an airplane here. That we, so I said, you know, "Let's let's go ahead. And we'll go put the Suzuki engine in it." So we did that, and uh, uh, and we kind of you know, probably over the years we've probably done more automotive engine conversions in, in airplanes than probably any other manufacturer, and with with a great deal of success. You know, the the engines themselves are are, are not the problem; it's all the accessories around it that that, that become the the. Uh, the problem, and and when you think about it, it's it's that you know the aircraft engines, you know we've been putting the you know pancake the Lycoming Continentals and in in these airplanes Franklins for uh, 60, 70 years, and and so they've worked out all the bugs. When you take an automotive engine, now it's not the engine itself. The engine the engines themselves are, are are okay, but now you've got all the accessories around it. I mean, just oil lines, uh, fuel lines. You know, some, some of the some of the problems were fuel lines. You know, oil lines, uh, 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 coolant. It's it's not it's not and it's not just the gearbox. It's it's uh, 
So you got you have all of those those variables and things that you have to learn about those systems that uh, uh, that come back to that can come back to bite you. But I think that that uh, you know we've had had real good success with it. And then of course you have have people that want, always want to do their own thing. That people want to get more horsepower, so they so they, uh, they they get a hot rod guy to to, uh, to beef up their their engine. So so the first thing hot rod guy goes to is high compression. Well, high compression is the enemy of, of propellers and gearboxes. So we don't you know we don't want that. We want you know stock engines. The stock engines have plenty of power. And then they're then they're also they're heavy. The engines are heavy by uh, by nature because we don't have to be as weight conscious on a on a car as we do in an airplane. So, um, but. But you have things like the LS and the and the BMW engines that are that are, are fantastic from a uh, power to weight ratio. So you have uh, the uh, the the LS engine is you know puts out a where we're using it is about 300 horsepower. Our gearbox is designed for 300 horsepower with a safety factor. So right right now, uh, I guess I wanted to beef up the gearbox. Uh, so I went to the, to Auto Flight to to Neil to have him. And this goes back a couple of years to build a 400 horsepower. Well, originally I went to him and had him build a 600 horsepower gearbox. Well, he had estimated that he could probably do the 600 gear bo horsepower gearbox for around 60 pounds. Our our current gearbox is around uh, 50 pounds. And when we actually got those gearboxes in, they were 92 pounds. Well, you know, I felt that was that was too heavy. So we had also. Uh, uh, got Whirlwind to to build a uh, a 92 inch prop, which uh, which also was supposed to come in at around 40 some pounds and ended up at 65 pounds. So so the, that combination um, and we actually did that for for racing. Okay, that, that that was why we built the 600 horsepower because we had never planned on putting 600 horsepower in, in one of these for for, for the average guy. So actually, we had four of those. Um, Autoflight made four of those gearboxes, and after they did, I said, "You know, it's too heavy. We don't, we don't want. We can't. We can't tolerate that weight." And uh, so we went back to. Uh, I went back to them and said, "Hey, but I but I would like a gearbox that'll that's designed for 400 horsepower because then that really exceeds anything that we're going to get out of the standard the standard V8." Neil is still working on it. I, I spoke to him just a few. Uh, uh, oh, it's probably a month ago now, but but he had uh, he he had the gearboxes basically finished, and uh, in fact the way that gear the gearbox came about was one of our New Zealand customers went to him, asked him to build a gearbox instead of uh, the belt drive, and uh, and so Neil called me and said, hey, if if I build this, I don't want to do a one off. If, if I build a gearbox for him, would you be interested in buying them? I said, you give me a hollow shaft to, uh, for the prop that I can put oil to, and yeah, I'll I'll, I'll buy them and I'll buy a bunch of them. So he 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 did that, and uh, so that's that's how we you know, we came about to to use the gearbox rather than and that was on the, for the Suzuki engine. So so then we we were actually he was he was making gearboxes that were dedicated to the engine. And uh, when I wanted to put a gearbox on the Honda, I said, hey, let's do this. Let's just make a universal gearbox and we'll make a bell housing to, to adapt to. So, so that's, that's how the universal gearbox came about. And that V8, it's real easy to, uh, in order to keep it in a safe range, I want I want it at 3,600 RPM, which is only about 280 horsepower. So it's well under the 300 horsepower, but I know even even on our airplane, occasionally I see 4,000 RPM you know, on, on takeoff, and it's hard it's hard to really manage that to keep it under because you know sometimes you'll get a surge or whatever and it, it pops up to that 4,000 RPM. So <clears throat> so I, I guess I wanted uh, I wanted uh, him to make a gearbox for us that was a little more robust. So he he started uh, down that that road and. Uh, uh, and, he, and he feels that you know that he's going to end up with you know just a little more weight than than what we have in the that the gear, gears are a little bit bigger the bearings are more robust uh, everything everything about that so so that's that's in process. Where prop. <laughs>